day. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Put some bubbles on real quick. I just got done with practice. We actually just talked about what we were going to be playing at the show we're going to be doing. And then we had dinner. Stacy made some uh, wedding soup. Italian wedding soup. It was pretty good. I don't know if you've ever had that before. It's got these little noodles, uh, small meatballs. It was pretty good. You put this cheese in it with bread. But anyway, I'm back home now, and I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do a landscape on a 14 by 14. So it, it shouldn't take long. It's kind of late. It's uh, 7:30 here in Seattle. So I imagine uh, everybody in Europe is sleeping. The East Coast is probably it's late. But I'm going to do a landscape anyway. I'm going to use uh, Alzerian Crimson with white on, as my undertone. I just mixed some white, very little white with Alzerian Crimson. And I'm going to put a thin layer of this color underneath I'm using water in a jug so it it's just really thin it's almost like watercolor but you don't need much of this for the undertone and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just gonna kind of roughly put some color in here and get started Hopefully some of this pink will show through and make something cool happen. There we go. That's enough. Right on. I had fun earlier before I went to a band practice. I, uh, I did a quick abstract. Here's what that came out to be. I actually did it sideways this time. Look how cool that looks. All the different colors. I used uh, neon colors, fluorescent. Green, yellow, pink, orange, blue. Check out that live. Uh... If you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool way to do uh, some abstract. I'm going to do an easy landscape today. This is all from my mind. And, but I want to do one where I think uh, if you're just beginning to do art, I'm going to do a simple landscape for you. I'll explain everything as I go. But right now I'm just going to sketch in like a, a mountain peak here with a, a knife this has burnt umber on it okay let's just put in a couple peaks there okay two peaks and uh, what I'm gonna do is kind of bury that I'll put this peak in front of that big one kind of like this and then I bury that big mountain behind this mountain like that. That's pretty easy. And then I'm going to have, I'll probably have a hill coming over here like this. I'm going to do a really simple one, okay? So something, uh, a beginner... This would be an easy one for a, a starting artist. You don't have to use a, a knife on this part if you don't want. I'm just trying to make 
hills in here right now and different some terrain you could use a charcoal pencil if you want to get to that point I like to use the knife but there there's what I'm gonna start with right there let me zoom this in a little better so you can see it <laughs> To sketch it in just that much I'm not I'm not putting the bushes or trees in because I'm gonna probably have a bunch of trees over here because I left this side kind of empty so I have bushes here with some big evergreen trees maybe and that's about all you need this is a 14 by 14 let me show you my Paint. This is yellow ochre, burnt umber, yellow. I put white in it. That's the Alzerian crimson with white. That's the undertone. So that this is very important. The uh, sap green. You got to put a little black in it, okay, for your trees, your evergreen trees. And then this sap green has. Uh, a little bit of I put a little bit of yellow ochre in there actually instead of yellow so it stayed it stayed kind of dark and then this one has yellow in it sap green with yellow so I got three different greens I'll probably put them in here somewhere on these hills gray white and I got a light powder blue for the sky okay you could get that powder blue already mixed down light like that. It's made by uh, it's made by Artist Loft. It's actually powder blue is what they call it, and it's it's kind of like a paint you can use right out of the tube because it's already it's already light enough for the sky. You see that? already light enough kind of looks like uh, what the sky looks like sometimes in the midday or something going right over that pink color so it's gonna maybe almost look purple here in a little bit I'll put some white clouds here on the side So this one should be very quick and I think if you're want been wanting to try uh, to do a landscape I'll try and make this one really simple to do so far it's really simple we got just two mountain peaks and one two three hills okay And this is acrylic paint, which it's it's not oil paint, <laughs> so this is it's a lot easier than oil paint. Look at that! That sky is kind of light. It's really light. I might I might have to darken it up a bit. We'll see. Maybe I'll run pink clouds through there. Let me check it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, when I go to do the clouds, I'll probably put the clouds in pink, and then it'll look cool. You see that? All right, that's what's going to happen. My clouds would be pink instead of white. And that'll look cool. <clears throat> so I'm just bringing white down to the mountains. Titanium white. leave a little bit of that red around the mountain tops it might look cool all right there's my sky let me put a little more blue in here it really got pretty light there we go simple 
All right, I'm gonna the mountain. I'm gonna do with gray. I just mix black and white together to get like a like a dark gray is all you need. You know, let's, I'm just gonna block in the mountains with this gray color. Just block in the whole mountains. And don't go too far down. Because this is going to be a valley in here. We'll uh, take a little bit of titanium white on your brush. And grab some of that gray. And just bring it down into this valley. Titanium white. Just fill in this whole valley with titanium white. Mix a little bit of that gray in there. There we go. That's all you need. When I do uh, some this, I don't always paint my landscapes like this, but this is a good way to get started. I'm putting all the color in first and then uh, I'll go from there. I'll put the snow on, do the clouds, do the trees. But I want to get all this color put in first. I'm going to try yellow ochre back here instead of grass on this far hill back here. My yellow ochre has a little bit of burnt umber in it. Okay. Just block this in with the yellow ochre. Just like that. And I'll probably put, uh, I'll put some trees up there. This here, I'm going to make this green here, light green. I'm not even going to rinse the brush off. I'm just grabbing the same, the color with the same brush that has yellow ochre on it. Let's Let's make this green down here. Just block it in. You could blend these two together if you want, where they come together. The yellow ochre and the green. Let's add a little white back here. Titanium white. Don't even rinse your brush off. Just grab some white and... Put it way in the distance there. And then blend it in a little. There we go. Let's put a little white up here. On this hill. Just a little. Cool. This hill, I'm going to make the uh, same yellow ochre here again. I'm not rinsing the brush. I'm just grabbing yellow ochre. And I'm going to block this in with that yellow ochre. Still got green on my brush. I'm just letting all the colors kind of mix. There we go. And I'll make this a dark green. The green that's in the middle. I mixed the uh, yellow ochre with sap green. We'll get a dark green going right here. And you could blend those two in where they come together. I'm trying to get this underpaint done quickly. Then we can start designing something in here uh, so here I'm gonna do yellow ochre again let's just keep going with the the idea yellow ochre grass and I think it's gonna end up looking cool yellow ochre here again and we'll put even I'm going to put my dark green down here. The green that I'm going to use for my evergreen trees. 
it's actually got black in it okay so it's a really dark green down here just block it in and blend it into that yellow ochre there a little and there the underpaint's done there's the scene wow i can take a breather now wow that looks cool look at that wow <laughs> i went through that pretty quick but you see how it looks kind of like uh we want these hills to look like they're further back so what i'm going to do I'm going to get a little more white and put it right here. Just titanium white on this edge. Just like that. Okay, and I'm going to put a little... I want to have a little white up here too. It's going to make those hills look further back in the distance. A little white up here. Alright, good enough, good enough. I'm going to put some shadows in here. So how I do that, I'll use this darker green that I used here and add some shadows in here with the brush and just kind of throw in some uh, dark green down here and then lightly blend it like that. That's good enough. Just so it looks like some shadows going on in there. Uh, the top of this dark green, I'm going to make put some white right here. And create like a, another hill in here. Just by using titanium white. Just like that. Blend it in. So I'm like trying to make it look like there's more things going on in there. Let's put a little white on top of this yellow ochre here. That's good enough. Alright, now I'm done with the underpaint. Look at that mountain with the pink uh, around the top, right in the middle there. Doesn't that look cool? With that pink underpaint. And you can see some of the pink uh, starting to bleed through down here in the valley. That's why it's cool to use uh, an underpaint. You don't always have to use an undertone. But this is the kind of effect you get if you do use an uh, undertone. If, if I didn't use that, that would be like a white canvas right there so this is looking really good guys I'm kind of worried about my clouds because I don't really make pink clouds let's give it a try though I'm going to try and do the clouds like I usually do with a two in a number two oil fan brush and uh, what I'm gonna do is start off with some of these clouds that kind of look like uh, they're just streakers so I'm gonna bring some color in the middle here and then lightly pull the bottom out underneath it like that I 
I think they're going to look good. I usually don't do pink clouds, but I think they'll be all right. We'll see what happens here. Really made that quite big. <laughs> Wow, it's looking good. I'm going to throw a white cloud in there now and see what it looks like. <clears throat> we'll put a white cloud up in there. I kind of wet my brush. I shouldn't have wet it, but we'll put a white cloud up here. Try and layer one across this one. Do 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 do. All right, something different. I'll come back to the sky. I'll come back to that. I'm going to put some snow on my mountains now. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put this one in front here. So what I'm going to do is run some snow... In front of that mountain there. This is straight titanium white. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? I'm going to use light blue for the uh, shadow side of this mountain. So I'm going to mix a little white with my blue to add a, just a touch of gray to it. I hope it looks all right. It's going to be like a, a bluish gray. And everywhere you put white, just put a little of this gray blue right next to the white. Okay. For these tight spots, use the small side of your knife here. 
come up right next to the white and then pull this blue just like that over here I got a little spot here in the middle you can try and get a little blue gray in there but basically just come up next to your white and pull the blue to the left. And even where you see how I got this white running down at an angle here, you got to put a little bit of blue even underneath those, okay? It'll make it look like a cool uh, cliff. Just a little bit of color underneath the white. Okay? And just be loose with it. Wow. Look at those mountains already. Now you could take this bluish color and you see up here there's a lot of little spots. You can add uh, little blue spots anywhere you want in your mountains up here. Okay, Just to add more things. Don't do too much though. Leave some of that dark color on the mountain. Wow! Those came out great. I'm like, I'm kind of rushing. I don't want this to be a long video. It's kind of late. I got to get up early tomorrow. But look at that. Now I got to get rid of this hard edge. So I'm going to blend it. This acrylic paint, if you just clean your brush in water and then dry it a little bit on a paper towel and just pull that blue down a little bit underneath and then lightly blend it like this really lightly all these hard edges just get a little blend on it okay at the bottom of the mountain lightly blended even up here I got a hard edge of blue Just lightly blend. It's going to soften the mountain up and make it look farther away. Okay. Up here on the side. There we go. Don't do up here. Keep Let the, this part of the mountain remain like in high definition. Okay. I just blended all this to make it look kind of blurry. And it helps the mountain look further back. Wow, I'm looking at this in the <laughs> the uh, iPad, man. That looks pretty cool. I haven't even been checking the chat. Who's in there? Panther three one eight. I thought you were my sister there for a second because my sister's uh, name. She uses Panther Freak or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out pretty good. If you're still in here, I should have looked up a little earlier, but Panther318, how you doing? Yeah, I only got two peaks up there. Look at look how cool that looks. All right, I'm going to move on because I don't want this to last too long. What I'm going to do today, I usually put these in dark and then lighten them up later. But I'm going to actually lighten up my green now for the, the trees that are in the distance. So I usually use this dark sap green with black. And I'm going to try and lighten it up now. So I don't have to do it later. So I'm going to use uh, 
this blue I was using on the mountain, I'm going to try some of that blue in that dark uh, sap green and black and lighten it up just a little. I'm going to use this color now for the, the distant trees back here. Let's see if it... Put some trees back here and see what it looks like really quick yeah I like it they're light enough because you'll see when I run a dark tree over that it's gonna get it's gonna get a like sap green and black it's really dark <laughs> but I like to use it for my tall evergreen trees. These are distant trees here. I'm going quick. You don't have to make these look perfect. They're I'm trying to go for a little bit of impressionism, but just slap the paint up there. You could take your time. I'm I'm just trying to rush, but We'll put a few small ones back here. Going down that hill there. Trying to go down that hill. All right, now I'm going to put a big tree here. So I'm going to put uh, some bushes right here in the foreground here. Some kind of bushes here. Pull the bottom. Get rid of that hard edge. Pull it to the right. Some bushes there. Take a little white. Titanium white. And put it right underneath where the bushes are going to be. The bottom of the bushes. So you can actually see where the bushes are. Lighten it up a little bit. Titanium white. Okay, it just brings it just brings the bushes out. Now you can see the row of bushes there. All right, dark sap green with black in it for an evergreen tree. We're using a two number two fan brush. Load it up. Let's put a tree all the way up into the sky. Taller than the mountain. Because I want it to look like. Have some kind of. Uh, form in here. Although I really don't care. But I'm going to put my leaves on. Really slow. And. See how it's darker than that green now. It should cover. It should go over that. Tree color. Perfect. And I'm going to come down to here. Adjust my branches a little bit. Fill it in a bit. Wow. I really like that. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to wet my brush just a little. Because uh, that was kind of, the paint was kind of... Uh, dry for me so I can get some pointier uh, branches you see that like that I'm gonna put a I'm not gonna put one here because I like those trees I'm gonna put a small one right next to it but right behind it so it doesn't come in front of it Same type of tree, but it's going to be behind it, okay? Like, right behind it. Look at that. I think I need another a small one down here. I'll put 
put like a family of trees here. Wow. Man, that is looking good. I really like that. I got to adjust this here, though. And it looked too skinny up here on the top, so there we go. That looks better. I like that. I'm going to highlight these trees. <clears throat> I'll show you how I do it. They're, I want to keep them dark. So with that same dark color, let's take a little bit of that uh, white, titanium white, and just put a little bit of white in it right here. Fill your brush up with that. It's a... Uh, a light color. I'm going to highlight this, the right side of this uh, evergreen tree. Just the top part of the branches. And mainly on the, the right side of the tree. Same thing here. Just on the right side. Could almost be lighter, but I'm going to leave it like that. Wow. Those look pretty good. I'm going to bring this one down just a little. Wow. This is coming out pretty good. Now I'm going to highlight these bushes here with the uh, yellow. Okay. I'll show you how I do it. It's going to really be bright bushes underneath there. Watch. I'm going to grab some yellow. All right. And now... Do, do one bush at a time, okay? Uh, I'm going to start low over here, like this, and create a bush here, and then do this one up here. I'm just doing the top parts of the bush, okay? Thinking that might be too bright. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. I'll just do them real quick and see if it's too bright. There we go. I think those look all right. Yeah, those will work. I wanted to have some contrast between, uh, you know, the trees and the bushes. You got to have some color in there. We've got a lot of pink up here. <clears throat> so, this is looking pretty good. I'm really liking this. Uh, man, it almost looks like oil painting, huh? It does look like an oil painting. Where am I at? 40 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to try and get this done in an hour. Uh, so I got 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to run some bushes here on this hill. And pop a few evergreen trees right here. Okay, it'll look cool because these are going to be look a little further away. So a few bushes here. 
on this hill. Get rid of that hard edge by just pulling that color underneath it, just like that, into the grass. Now, I'm going to make some trees here, but smaller than those, to make these look like they're, you know, further away in the distance. Just some quick trees. Nothing special. And we'll put a small one here. There we go. We got a family of three here, a family of three there. Wow, this is looking really cool. We'll keep that same theme going with the, I'll put some yellow bushes underneath these guys too. Uh, I'll make these bushes yellow, just like that. And it'll look like we got some kind of theme going on there of uh Maybe I should make those like yellow ochre, put a yellow ochre mixed with the yellow. So they're not as bright as these, okay? Because they are, they're further away. So just a little bit of yellow ochre in them. There we go. That looks good. <coughs> Perfect. All right, guys. I don't even know who's in here. We got a panther. <laughs> right on. I'm glad you're relaxing, man. That's what this is about. Uh, all good stuff here. Uh, I just recently, like, in February, I became, like, uh, partners with YouTube because you had to get a 1,000 subscribers, right? And then you had to have 400 hours of viewing time to get all this, to get the commercials put on. The only reason I got the commercials like on my videos is because they'll they'll uh, send them out more okay that's the only reason why I have those commercials on my videos because if you don't have commercials they just bury your videos and no one will ever see them you know so I had to do that <clears throat> it's not the reason why I I didn't want to put commercials on my videos, but YouTube will uh, send your videos out more if you do. I don't know what the point I was trying to make. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there. Oh. I was going with because they sent me a thing the other day and because I don't have any like anything derogatory in my paintings or my presentations so they're going to put probably put better commercials on my videos uh, than you'll see on other people's commercials I'm hoping. There's one commercial I hate seeing that all the time. It's what, like the one where <laughs> I don't even want to say it. But it has something to do with the bathroom. I'm like, man, if I see that video, if I see that commercial one more time, I'm going to puke, man. Yeah. 
You probably know which one I'm talking about. All right, enough with the commercials. All right, so I need something here, and I need something here. I want to lighten this grass up a little bit. So if you've never painted, uh, did acrylic before, you could take a clean brush. It's a little wet with water, and get a little bit of yellow, just a little bit of yellow. And let's run some yellow in this grass here. It's almost like a wash, I call it. And just blend it in there really lightly. And it'll change the color of that grass. You see that? There we go. Yeah. Oh, I know what I can do now. Okay. So I'm, I'll put little hills in there. See, that gave me an idea now. I'll take a little bit of uh, titanium white and put some hills in here like this. There we go. So it looks like it's kind of got some hills in there. And then I'll put a bush down here uh, right in the corner here. Then I can highlight that with maybe, uh, red or orange. So I got to put something over here in this area. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and throw another tree here. Right in between here and here. Yeah, right. I already marked that, so i got to do it now. <laughs> I'll put uh, some bushes down here. And run just one tree there and see what it looks like. I think it'll be all right. It'll give me something closer in the foreground here. There we go. Give me something to highlight again, too. This one, I'm going to put a little green in it because it's closer to us. So I'll put a little white in my light green. And oops, I'm going to let me let it dry for a second. Here, I'll highlight these bushes with green. All right, I think it's dry enough. We'll put a little green on this evergreen tree. There we go. Cool. Magnolia, wow, that's the name of my band. Magno Magnolia Steel Band. Magnolia Steel Band, we're on YouTube, uh, you should check us out. 
Wow, that's a cool name. Very cool. I think I want to use, I want to make these orange. I have Indian yellow here. I'm going to mix it in some yellow though to get like some multiple colors. In these bushes here. There we go. I'm going to put some flowers out here. And put some yellow flowers in the grass here. Pretty cool. This is coming out pretty good. I like that I added that extra tree there because uh, it uh, it really adds to the painting, I think. Plus, I got something over the mountain, and it looks like it's 3D now. I got something like an object in the front over that far distance there. Man, this one's coming out good. I'm really happy with this one. It's a small painting, 14 by 14. I usually don't like painting small canvases, but... I usually paint on a 16 by 20 or bigger. But this one will sell. I'll, uh, I think it looks good. When you put more trees in it, it looks better. It really does. So there's not much more to do to this. I kind of like what I have. I could try and lighten up some of the ground, but I'm going to leave it. But it needs twigs, so let me put a few twigs in there and some birds. If you've ever watched my videos before, I always put, I always put some birds up here. in the sky and I, I like to put uh, some twigs in here all around all around the trees I live in Seattle, by the way, but so I'm surrounded by all these uh, trees and mountains and water. I have no water in this one. I usually have a river or something in there, so you guys are witnessing something different today. <laughs> Twigs. If you've ever been to Seattle and you go to the parks, man, there is twigs everywhere. When you walk down the uh, pathways and stuff, I put a lot of twigs in here. Wow, what do you guys think of that? Let's see who I got. Uh, 
This one, I, I usually sell them for like $50. $50. Because I like to get rid of them. If, if, I, if I sell them in an art gallery, they want like $350 for them. So when I sell them, I sell them cheap because I go to the... I go to the uh, summer markets and I just have a table and a tent and I just sell them really cheap to get rid of them, you know. This year is going to be fun selling because now, now I can tell them that these were painted on YouTube. So I'll mark the back on here the day I painted it on YouTube and sign it. And <clears throat> yep, that's about how much I sell them for. Now, the bigger ones I don't sell for uh, 50 bucks, you know. Also, when I'm out there selling, when I sell my paintings like at a, a farmer's market, as somebody wants a big one, they, that's called a commission, right? They'll, they'll commission the piece to do on a larger canvas, and then that's where you charge a lot of money, okay? But these little ones, you just, you got to sell them cheap or they won't buy them. That's why you got to get you you got to get good at painting and get it done quickly and then you don't mind selling it for uh, $50, okay? Cuz it only took an hour to paint it. If you're going to like sell for a living. And you got to live in a city that where they really like art like Seattle. Man, they love art here in Seattle. <laughs> Portland has a good art scene. Uh, I don't know anything about California, but I'm sure you would do good in California. All right, guys. Well, I'm glad you guys stopped in. Magnolia. Nice, cool name. If you guys make sure you guys sub sub subscribe so you can check out my next. Uh, and if you like it, hit the like button there. You got to close the chat out. Uh, and then there's a the like button on the actual page. I really appreciate you guys being in here because I know it's late. All right, I think that's all I'm going to do. Let me give you a straight shot on there. So you can see it right straight on the front. There you go. Yeah, I know it's a great deal because, uh, Oh, the other thing is, <clears throat> like, this is acrylic paint, right? Acry acrylic paint. And it's already dry. It, it dries fast. Like, if I used to do them in oil paint, but you have to wait three weeks. You have to wait three weeks before you can sell it. Like, this I can sell to you 
tomorrow and send it to you because it's already dry, okay? That's why I do acrylic. <clears throat> but I do it to make it look real. I'm trying to do realistic landscapes. But in the future, I'm going to start getting more like impressionistic. But for now, I'm doing realistic paintings. That, that one came out great because I started with the pink uh, undertone. If you missed the beginning, go back and watch how I put pink underneath all this color. You can see some of the pink is coming through in some places here. Wow. That's my favorite one so far this year. I really like that. Man, that, yeah, that looks really good. The only thing I think I could have did better is the uh, pink clouds up here. A little too dark. They're a little too dark. The white clouds look like they would have been okay if I had white clouds in there. But, I mean, it looks all right. Thanks, Panther. Sky Moses, right on. Let me show you a few effects I got here. <laughs> Just to entertain you for a second. There you go. You got some bubbles there. These move too. They like. These are all YouTube. Uh, they give you some of these little functions you can play around with for a creator. I like this one here, watch. It's like, it turns it into an eight millimeter film. This makes it look like a silver screen right there. All right, you guys, make sure you subscribe and I will see you on the next video. How's that sound? the next live you got to check out some of my abstract stuff i should have showed you before you left uh one of my abstract pieces they come out pretty cool look at all that stuff that happens in there it's pretty fun to do too all right guys good night and we'll see you on the next uh we'll see you on the next one Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you. Right on. Yeah, go to my channel and watch uh, some of the abstract videos. They're a little shorter. They're only like 20 minutes long, but those come out pretty cool. See you guys. Good night.